This is the story of Plymouth building the biggest bridge of its kind in Britain. We're finally getting to see it come to life, which is fantastic. It's the story of some very big pieces of concrete, some massive machines, I think I've peaked, to be honest. <laughs> some curious creatures. Every day is different. Uh, wildlife's never doing what we expect. And an epic journey. You have two lanes there, Andrew, if you want to use them. All the jobs I've done, this is probably the, one of the hardest. The Forder Valley Link Road Bridge has a seamless design with no expansion joints, making looking after it simpler. But building it is quite a challenge. I'm absolutely uh, obsmacked. It's time for the big bridge build at Forder Valley. It's May 2021. Heading to Plymouth, all the way from Ireland, is a convoy of massive bridge parts. I'm Ray Kennedy. I'm uh, an escort driver for Shame Order Freecast. Probably they're in their car. They think on lorry is the same as every other lorry they see in the road. They don't realise that three times the length of it and four times the weight and they need a lot of space to turn. Might be as well to stay on the right hand side of the road with it. Plymouth is an awful lot of hills, major amount of hills. All the jobs that I've done by, by Shea Murder over the years, this is probably the, one of the hardest. There's too many hills. At the construction site, they're gearing up. I'm Steve Flaxton. I help look after the Forder Valley Transport Project for Plymouth City Council. We have 28 beams to lift into place, 32 metres in, in length, and uh, it requires a, a huge crane that is capable of reaching across half of the bridge, so it actually needs to reach 100 metres in length and uh, lift these massive uh, beams into place as it does so. I'm glad I'm not doing it because I've too much of a shaky hand, but these guys, they do this day in, day out, and they know exactly what they're they're doing and uh, I've every confidence it's going to go without a hitch. I'm Michael Clark, I'm a crane operator. Uh, the crane's a 1200 class, she was made in 1983. It's an AK912, got walled. I'm relying on the lads to bank me in and they've got the measurements of where they need to be and they're just relaying that back to me on the radio. Keep her coming mate, keep her coming, you tell me when you have to go and telling me whether I need to head up, head down, slow left or right, basically. Can you come in down here, I think? Well, obviously it's all hydraulic, so it's, it is sensitive. You could be as you could be as fine as you want or as rough as you want, I suppose. All right, hold that, Tony. Hold that. We're going for another light. But you do get a feel for it with any crane you drive. You get you get a feel for how the crane reacts, and you just get used to it, I suppose. They're now halfway through the build. The crane is dismantled. And taken to the top end of the site. It's a big moment for the team. Philip Hesseltine, Head of Transport, Plymouth City Council. I'm absolutely, uh, uh, well, <laughs> gobsmacked by the extent of which the work has now progressed. It's a critical piece of infrastructure that uh, we need to deliver many jobs and many homes across the city. So the sheer scale of the um, construction is bringing investment and employment into the city and the sheer logistics is a great achievement again for Balfour Beatty and their team. With a scheme on this scale, there's a lot to think about. My name's Melanie Barnicott. I'm the uh, consultant ecologist working on the site here, which basically means that I come and uh, keep an eye on the wildlife that's using the site uh, and make sure it's protected during the construction. So here are the bat boxes just up there on the trees. We've got a whole host of protected species using the site, um, which is brilliant because, you know, we're right in the middle of an urban environment here. We've got otter using the stream that comes down through the middle of the site. We've put in bat flight corridors throughout the site, which are particularly there for horseshoe bats. We also have known badger activity. We've been monitoring those with trail cameras. My job's fantastic, you know, every day is different. Uh, wildlife's never doing what we expect. 
So we always have to make sure, you know, that we're protecting it for all protected species. On site, it's weather for ducks. I'm sat there with a the heater on and everything and everything's good, but it's the lads on the ground that are getting getting the brunt of the weather like. We got that trough, Kate. Unfortunately, you get your bad days and you get your good days. That's that's the job, isn't it, I suppose? And two weeks after they started, bang on schedule, the last bridge beam is craned into place. I've been involved in uh, quite a number of uh, projects in, in Plymouth uh, over the last uh, 20 years. And uh, every one that we seem to come to is bigger than the last one. And this is no exception. What's that? Has that got the, have you got the pin back in that, yeah? Yeah, there's, there's bigger cranes out there. For me, I don't know. I think I've peaked, to be honest. <laughs> Nick, just lower it off a touch for me. Lower it off, mate. Down on your line. Down on your line. All right, mate. Hold that for Tony. Hold that. Proud. Of course, you're going to be proud. The road is due to open next summer and ultimately promises to unlock new homes and new jobs for the people of Plymouth.